So in this video today, we're gonna to be sharing the hardest parts about being a commercial real estate agent. Now listen, I know many of you watching this have either just thought about getting your real estate license. Some of you have been in the business a little while, and some of you have been in the business for quite some time, but I wanted to share with you my personal experiences from being a commercial real estate agent who have sold hundreds of millions of dollars worth of property and going to be selling billions of dollars more since I love this industry so much. I just feel like there's not enough information about the pros and cons about being a commercial real estate agent. But in this video, I'm sharing with you the disadvantages of being a commercial real estate agent. Point number one is that it is an insane learning curve. There is a ton of information, unlike the residential side, where you're not gonna know everything on either side of the coin, commercial, residential, but specifically for commercial real estate, there is an endless learning curve of how on earth do I run numbers, find more deals, people to be working with. There's always so many different facets of the commercial world that you're just not gonna know 100% of. Because there's such a high learning curve, what often happens is that you end up having to go with a mentor or somebody else to help you even long into your career because there's so many different facets of every deal different asset classes, different ways to look at numbers, different types of loans you might have to get just to get the deal to work, okay? Because it's obviously all about the numbers and the upside and the value. So when you're trying to get into the commercial world, I don't care how long you've been in the business or even just looking to get started, it's important to know you're not gonna know everything and that's okay. But more than anything, you need to be creating opportunities. Yes, you're gonna have an incredibly high learning curve, which I'm gonna give you a couple points of things you can work on to work on curving that learning curve uh, to make it a little bit easier for you. But just know, you're not gonna know everything. You can take a deep breath, it's okay. There's still opportunities that I get into and deals and transactions that I become a part of that I don't know everything. And that's okay, I just know how to find the right people. It's about being resourceful instead of a thought of like, oh, I don't have enough resources or knowledge, okay? It's becoming resourceful in these instances. Point number two, the sales cycle is forever, or at least feels like that. The sales cycle in commercial real estate can feel like forever sometimes. And what ends up happening is that in the residential world, you can commonly do deals in 30 to 60 days, very, very commonly, just about all over the country. However, in the commercial world, it is very common for deals at the fastest sometimes to take 60 days, <laughs> where a multitude of transactions, specifically development types of deals, can take 90 days, six months, 12 months to close. And a lot of these deals don't go through. During due diligence, something doesn't make sense. The financials actually don't make sense. They show you these BS numbers, and once they actually see the, the leases, or once you really come down to it, there's actually a lot more expenses than everybody thought. There's due diligence issues in regards to environmental or structural. The point is, a lot of commercial deals don't go through. A lot do, but a lot don't. So that sales cycle, and if you do not have a huge pipeline, what ends up happening is that it can be very, very difficult to sell lots of commercial property throughout your career or on an annual basis. In the residential world, it's a little bit easier to sell lots of transactions, okay? I just wanna to stress to you is that the sales cycle in the commercial world is a lot more difficult to stay full, right? Like that, that cycle, that pipeline, is much more difficult to stay full because again, the, the delays and how long that sales cycle can be and how long the transactions end up taking and the fact that you know a lot of deals don't close, right? So a lot of deals you'll get accepted and you'll get into a turn and review and you're so excited and all of a sudden the deal dies in a turn and review. So it's just, again, it's very important to realize it's got a very long sales cycle and there's a lot of deals that don't go through. Okay, point number three is that this business is very mundane. It's not very sexy. And what I've learned is that if actually, if you're doing the same thing every day, even though it might not look sexy, guess what? You're doing the right things every day. That means you're making your calls. That means you're going out networking. That means you're doing all the right activities and you're probably gonna have a really long career. However, it's not a sexy career. I'm gonna be honest with you, right? It's really not a sexy career being a commercial real estate agent. Is there a lot of money? And there is there a lot of people who make a lot of money? And is it amazing what you can build on the development side? And maybe that on that side, it can be a little sexy, but again, it takes a lot long, it takes very long to close some of these deals. The point being is keep with mundane. It's supposed to be mundane. If it feels mundane, guess what? You're probably doing the right activities. The next point I wanna talk about is that the type of clientele that you're speaking with is a little bit higher level of an individual than your average homeowner. This individual, again, large majority of the time, these are multimillionaires, people who are very savvy, people who are no numbers. So if you, again, if you're just a brand new realtor and you're calling these people up, you better know what you're talking about or at least sound like you know what you're talking about. On the residential side, you can have gotten your license two days ago, two weeks ago, two months ago, and you can call up a homeowner and you can probably do pretty well. However, on the commercial side, when you're two weeks in the business, two months in the business, they can really run circles around you. So it's important, it's very, very important that you learn how to underwrite deals, know what questions to ask, 
so that you don't look silly in front of these incredibly successful people. Because what I have found is that, again, to burn a bridge takes two seconds, to build a relationship takes a long time. It's about how you hold yourself, the confidence levels, the, your expertise. Like a lot of this type of stuff is not exactly about what you say, but it's about how you say it and how you come off. I'm not saying that I have known everything, but instead of trying to act like I know everything, I say, hey, that's a fantastic question. Let me get back to you on that. Oh, is this the best phone number to reach you at right now? And I'll just sound very professional. Instead of acting like a know-it-all, which people can see right through that, be very transparent. Like, listen, that's a great question. Let me get back to you on that. This is your cell phone, correct? Yes, fantastic. Can I call you back on Thursday or Friday to give you an answer? Yes, absolutely. Right, that's the appropriate way when you don't know something. Just know it's a crazy learning, like we talked about in the crazy learning curve, but it's also important to understand that when you're speaking to clients, you need to know what you're talking about or at least know where to find that information. The next point also is all about cost. In the commercial world, you need infinitely more software than you do in the residential world. In the residential world, you really could have a CRM system, a dialer, and a phone, and that's about it. And you can be incredibly successful and have a very good career. Now, on the commercial side, if you do not have CoStar and you have to pay for it, it's not cheap. If you need things like Reonomy, again, not cheap. You're gonna need several of the softwares to pull that data and then be able to cross-reference those lists so you can get phone numbers, not cheap. Again, you'll need a dialer, you need a CRM system as well. You're gonna have to buy a few extra pieces of software, which can cost you a few hundred to a few thousand a month, right? And these are things that are absolutely necessary. Okay, you're also gonna probably gonna have to become a, a premier member of several different either MLSs in your area or several other softwares, which we can dive into another video. Again, a lot of people are using like things like Biz Buy Sell, LoopNet, you're gonna have to become members of these different softwares, which again, cost you money every single month. There's a lot more cost associated to being a commercial real estate agent than just, you know, hypothetically getting your license. Like in the residential side, you're probably gonna have a CRM system included with your brokerage. And if not, you can get one for 25 bucks. You don't really need a dialer, even though I'd highly recommend one. Very, very different. It's gonna be a lot more expensive on the commercial side. Make sure you are prepared for it, or at least you are part of a brokerage or a team that does provide it. Okay, next point. I wanna dive into the fact that in the commercial world, the splits are incredibly convoluted. What I mean by this is, in the commercial world, it is very, very normal for a brand new agent to make 25% of a transaction. It is very normal for an agent who is also you know, fairly new in the business to also get 50-50, depending on how the lead is generated, okay? So hypothetically, if the team brings a lead or for your very first two or three transactions or something like that, an agent might receive 20, 25% on a deal, especially if the team is providing you leads. You might only make 25% of a deal. If you're getting all your software paid for and you're getting all this uh, support and all you had to do is pick up the phone, go tour the property with a buyer that the, the team already has, and you made 20 to 25% commission of a $100,000 commission check, guess what? It's probably pretty much worth it, okay? But just know that 20% to 50% of a transaction, right, or of the commission check, is very common in the commercial world. In the residential world, it's very common to get 60-40, 70-30, 80-20, right off the bat, right? Like, with no expertise, no nothing. If you could fog a mirror, here's 80%, good luck. In the commercial world, it doesn't work like that. It is very common that you are gonna get 50-50 probably at best, at absolute best, and that's with you generating all your own business. And honestly, that's probably with not a lot of support either, okay? It's just very common for that to happen. And over time, as you sell more property, guess what? Then you'll be compensated at a higher and a higher and a higher level. So just know, very common to be compensated at much lower splits than the industry average on the residential side. So whatever you're probably hearing on that side of the coin, it's not the same in the commercial world. And another point I wanna bring up that I think that every single real estate agent needs to hear is that in the commercial world, the mentorship and coaching side of things is almost non-existent. There's really not a lot of information out there. It's much harder to find information around how to grow a business, be a successful salesperson, a successful successful commercial realtor and go off and sell hundreds of millions of dollars worth of property like I have by 28 years old. It's very hard to find mentors and coaches in this industry. And if again, if you're looking for a coach, make sure you check out the next few minutes of this video. I'm sure you're gonna absolutely love it. Beyond that guys, listen, I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you have any questions. Beyond that guys, I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone. If you're still watching this video, that means to me that you're a committed real estate agent and you're looking to take your life and business to the next level. I'm just curious. Why have you yet to schedule your free, no obligation coaching consultation? All you have to do is simply go in the description down below and people are telling me this call has been the most unbelievable, the most powerful call they've had in their entire career. And here's just a few of the individuals who have taken full advantage of this call.
call. And my mission is to support as many realtors as possible, build a six and seven figure net income business so that they don't have to rely on this industry anymore for their everyday income. If you're a committed realtor, which I can see like you are, all you have to simply do to take full advantage of this free coaching consultation is to go in the description down below and schedule your free call now.